As quilters, it's hard to pass up on a new technique, and I want to show you my favorite. I love combining my fat quarter stash with lots of strips for a super scrappy quilt. Even better is making a simple large quilt block, cutting it into smaller blocks for an amazing new quilt. I'm Leah Louise from Inspired Quilting by Leah Louise, and you're going to love this quilt. Let me show you how to make the quarter log cabin block. Here are the blocks that I made for the quarter log cabin. This is the large block that we're now going to cut into quarters to get our quarter log cabin block. Now, if you missed that video, I'll put a link up above so you can review how it's made. You notice that we have a center and then we have one, two, three, four, and five rounds, but notice one round is a bit narrower and I just do that to add an accent and I used it in a darker color so it would stand out a little more. So let me just show you a couple of these and then I'll get to the bottom of the pile and we'll do some cutting. So you can see that there's all kinds of colors mixed in. This quilt top is going to have over a hundred different fabrics that I used from fat quarters, um, actually predominantly fat quarters and a lot of them are, were stash fabrics that I had on hand as well as some that I recently purchased. So here we are. I want to show you how I cut this. You can do it in a number of different ways. I'm going to show you the way I do and explain why I do it this way. If we just cut down the center here and here, we may not get even corners. This is going to be our center corner and this is what we're going to use as a setting point when we're putting our blocks together. So in other words, this is going to be pretty visible. So I want them all to be as evenly pieced as possible. I don't want to come in and let's say, you know, my seam allowance was off over here. And so one half of the block is bigger and the smaller is small and the uh, other side is smaller. I want them to be relatively even. So what I do is I come in and I know my center block should be at about four and a half inches. So I'll set my ruler at approximately two and a quarter and I bring in a second ruler. This way I can measure both sides to make sure that I'm even. So I use the large ruler and I set these lines along the logs, the, the lines from the seam sewing all the logs together. And that shows me that this is relatively straight. Now the other thing I'm going to do is line this up so it's at, two, at uh, two and a quarter from the center. And as long as I'm getting my two and a quarter on each side, then I'm good to go ahead and cut. And I'm going to start down here. Now this block almost measures 24. I think it's at 23 and a half inches. So it's kind of tough to cut on the mat and you need a, a good size ruler for this. Now I'm going to do the same here. I'm going to set this at two and a quarter and I'm going to line my ruler guides just to make sure that my block is not going to be skewed. And I'm going to go two and a quarter here and make sure that's two and a quarter. If it happens to be off, and let's say I get two and a quarter here, but I only get two and an eighth on this side. Split the difference. Move them so they're equal on both sides. The two and a quarter is our goal, but if we have to adjust that a little bit, that's okay. It's going to be pretty minute, and it's just going to give you a better balanced quilt because these, for me, are a high contrast color. And this and this are primarily my accents, so they're going to stand out. So I want these to be relatively uniform. If you're not doing that in your quilt, then you don't have to worry about it at all. So I'm going to go ahead and finish cutting my blocks. I just put these in a pile. You know, do you see how each block takes on such an individual look? They, they have a lot of the same colors. But by using this diagonal, and that's something that I talk about a lot in the first video on piecing this, is that diagonal just adds so much interest to this particular quilt, plus it makes the strip piecing so much quicker. 
and chain piecing. I mean, it's it's a win all the way around. So let me go ahead and get the uh, rest of the blocks cut, and then I'll show you where we're going to go from there. Once all the large log cabin blocks are cut into quarters, we want to trim them down so they're all a uniform size. In measuring a few of my blocks, I can tell that 11 and a half is going to be about the common size all my blocks will end up at. So what I'm going to do is cut them, and I'll do the first one here with the square ruler. And what I do is I line this corner up here. So this corner that's going to be my center point is going to line up at 11 and a half on this ruler. Now, the thing with this, I want to make sure I stretch that out. I kind of got a narrow spot there I'm going to have to fuss with. Let's see, that's 11 and a half and 11 and a half. Okay, so I have one that's short and it does happen. There are a couple things I can do and it's almost a quarter of an inch short. So I may have to readjust this particular one, but remember I made extra. So I'm going to just set this one aside right now and one of the first things that I can do is come in and see if I have a bit of extra room. Now you can see here that there's a bit of overlay there. So if I were to take this strip off, move it over just a little bit, and then take a narrower seam, that's probably going to get me what I need. So I'm going to set that aside right now, but that, that's a good example to show you that Sometimes you come up short, and for me, I always like making extra blocks, not only for that reason, but so I can, you know, incorporate them into the back, uh, maybe a border, maybe an accent piece, like for a tabletop or something. So there are a lot of different options, and you're going to find what works best for you. If you have absolutely accurate seams every time, then God bless you, you go for it. Now, I don't always. Um, sometimes I get to go in too fast and I'm not always paying as close attention as, as I should. So I have this set at 11 and a half, actually just a bit too much. 11 and a half here and 11 and a half here. So this corner fabric is at the 11 and a half inch. So this right here is my 11 and a half. You see where I'm matching up those two ends? And then all I need to do is cut this outer strip. And once this strip is cut off, I have a beautifully cut 11 and a half inch square block. So that's how we do it with the, the block, with the uh, square ruler. And so what you do is this point here is going to line up with this corner here at the point where you want it to finish. And in this case, it was 11 and a half. So by putting this 11 and a half and this 11 and a half on the outside edges of my block, then I've got this at 11 and a half and I just trim off the rest. I know, that's a lot of numbers, isn't it? Now, alternatively, there's another way we can do this. There are always multiple ways to do just about anything in quilting. That's something that I have definitely found. So we just want to pick a point, and I just use a place where there's heavier lines so that they stand out and I can tell what I want to line up. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and I'm definitely at eleven three quarters, so I'm good there. And I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And yep, there's my 11 and a half. So what I can do here is I'm just going to hold this. You want to make sure nothing moves. The advantage with the square ruler is that it sort of holds everything and you don't have to move your ruler around. So I'm going to set this at 11 and a half. And just given my nature of not always uh, counting. <laughs> I want to go ahead and double check. Remember, count twice, cut once. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven and a half. And that's nice and straight. So I'm going to cut this off. And I'm going to do the same up here. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 
and we'll go to the half there and there and just trim it off. So I'm just going to go through and trim all these and then we're going to get into laying out the quilt. It's a lot of fun. I know on point sounds daunting and I've done a couple others before and what I'm going to do this time instead of using the extra blocks to use as our setting triangles on the side of the quilt, we're just going to use plain fabric. I have some background fabric that I bought that I think is going to work perfectly. So let me get these cut up and then I'm going to show you how we'll cut those triangles to fill in these sides. And then we're going to lay out our quilt and it'll be together before you know it. Let's take a look at how we set a square block on point. And this is very common in patchwork quilts. It's a lot of fun. It creates a very distinctive design. And I really like it for this kind of a pattern where the corner is really a prominent part of the design. And I think it makes it look wonderful. You can see the other two that I've done. I did the on point setting a little bit different by using the blocks themselves. In this one, I'm going to use a background. So I bought yardage for it and it has a lot of the colors with almost a creamy white background so it matches a lot of the low volume that I have within the quilt. So I think that's going to be a lot of fun. Now when we are doing our quilts on point, what we do is we set our rows up like we normally would except that around the edges we don't line them up. So I'm just putting some of these here. Let's get a couple extra there. So what I'm doing here, just pull this in. Okay, I'm going to need my ruler. So we're going to line our blocks up like we normally would and we'll sew them into rows just like this. So we'd sew these blocks together, these blocks, and these block, and this block. What we do though is we offset them by a block. We don't line them up, you know, end to end like this. We don't want a straight edge because we want the on point and that requires triangles along the outside. And that also means we're dealing with bias edges versus grain, straight of the grain edges, and that requires a little bit more attention in order to get a really good fitting quilt to make sure all the blocks fit well together and make it easier to quilt in the long run. Because when you have a lot of bias edges, particularly around the outside edge of your quilt, it stretches. It's difficult to handle when you're basting because it, it moves and it shifts more easily and it can also be very difficult when you're quilting because as the fabric is being pushed around by the presser foot as you're quilting it's going to stretch potentially in those areas. So the more we can do to alleviate those problems the easier it is for us to make the quilt and the nicer it's going to look and in the end because everything will be nice and straight. So here's here's where we start. When the quilt is put together, like I said, we offset it. Each row is offset by a block, so we leave a block out here. But now we have this empty triangle that we need to fill with something. We can also consider using a block, make it a little bit bigger, cut it in half diagonally, and tuck it right in there. And that's a great way to get your quilt edge just like this. So now you have your on point and you have your straight edge around here. And when I've done it this way, like I did previously on the, uh, the other quilts, which I'll, I'll put links up above so you can see those and see how those looked versus what we're doing today. I did cut these across here, but what I did is I basted them. I used like stay stitching about an eighth of an inch before I cut them and then that just helps keep everything nice and in line where it needs to be. But that's not the way we're going to do it today. That's a little more work to use that method. I like using it and I like how it turns out, but I wanted to use a different background altogether. And this is what I have. 
It's a pretty background. It's a creamy white, so it goes along with a lot of the low volume fabrics that are in the quilt. And it has the pink and the dark pink, a rose color. It has a bit of uh, a turquoise blue as well as a, uh, a green in here. So there's a lot of colors that really work well together. And I think this will make a really good background. But I need to figure out what size I need to cut my blocks in order to create these triangles. Ordinarily, you would think I'm just going to take a block like this, cut it in half. Let's see, let me use this one. Cut it in half and just place it in here. And there we go. But remember, when you cut a block in half, you have to allow additional size on that block in order to get your seam allowance. Because remember, when you cut a block from corner to corner, you get these long, long dog ear edges. And you need about 3 eighths of an inch there just to get your seam allowance. So we need to add that extra bit onto our block. If you like precision quilting, there are a number of calculation charts that you can follow to get exact dimensions and everything is going to just fit like a puzzle and there you go, no trimming. I prefer to cut my squares just a little bit bigger to give me that fudge factor so when I'm trimming along that I don't have to worry about something coming up just a little bit short because maybe my seam allowance is off or I didn't cut it straight, whatever the case may be. I am not a perfect quilter, I can guarantee you that. So I always allow a fudge factor to cover whatever may occur. So what I do is I need a square that is going to have an outside edge. So think of a square just like this, and I need, I'm gonna turn this inside out. I need this outside edge, this straight edge right here to fit along this open area along the side of my quilt. I'm going to get a big square like this and I'm going to cut it this way and this way. This gives me four triangles and this is going to be the outside edge here and here and here and here. And these corners will be what fit into the middle of these quilts. So let me show you how this is going to work. Now, the easy way for me, I can go through the calculations and come up with a precise number. I'm okay figuring it out on my own. I think because I'm comfortable enough with math and, and, and did all that, that I, I can visually understand what's going on. And I'm definitely a visual person. And while I understand and know how to do the calculations, this is still just a positive kind of affirmation to me that yes, this is right. And I prefer to count on my own math than somebody else's, um, only because problems happen. And so here I am. So I'm going to go, I'm lining these up so they're in nice straight lines, because if I skew these and don't get them straight, then that's not going to give me a very good dimension, and I'm going to be creating more problems myself. But I want to know how long I need to cut a square, the edge of the square to go from here to here. So essentially, this is what I want. I want that dimension right here. So I'm going to put my ruler starting right here and go all the way to this corner. And I'm just shy of 17 inches. So when I cut my square, and in this case, it's 17 inches, I will cut it at 18 inches. You can even go 18 and a half, but generally an inch is plenty. And then I am going to cut it diagonally this way. So first I'll cut it diagonally that way, and then I'll cut it diagonally this way, and this is what I end up with. Obviously mine will be bigger because this is only a 11 and a half inch square and I need to use an 18 inch square, but this gives me my triangle and this is the outside edge of my square. So it's on the straight of the grain and I don't have to worry about the bias edge. These are the bias edges. They are going to be sewn up against each of these sides. So as I'm sewing my 
my quilt, I do this side, then I do this side, then I'm going to take one of these, it'll be cut to the appropriate size, and it's going to look more like, like this. I'm going to sew these straight across. This is going to be a bias, but that's okay. This is a good sturdy seam. There's nothing stretchy right here. It's on the straight of the grain. So when I sew this, I'm just going to pin it gently. I'm going to put the bias on top so that I can make sure I'm sewing it without this stretching. If I put it underneath, sometimes I'm afraid the uh, feed dogs will pull it apart, pull it in and, you know, make it wavy a bit. Um, I don't want it to stretch, but by doing it this way, I have my, my whole row is set up. I have my side setting triangle right here, and this is on the grain of the fabric. That's what we're doing. And that works really great. So what I'm going to do is cut some 18 inch squares. I need four half square triangles on each side. Um, I'll show you a picture of what the layout is before I do the triangles and, and set them in. And so I'll do four of the large 18 inch squares, cut that diagonally twice, so each one will give me four triangles, four side setting triangles, so I have four for each side of the quilt. So this is working great. But one thing I do want to show you too, um, don't always just go with the first measurement. Let's, let's do this again. I just want to show that to you because it's important to know that sometimes when we quilt, we're not always exact. I know we like to be, I didn't trim this one down, so I'm just going to overlap that. And then I'll put this one, let's see, right here. Oh, that goes this way. Okay, so what I do is I just take my ruler. Does anyone see my ruler? There it is. Okay, here it is. And I'm just going to measure point to point and make sure they're all. So this one, oops, is it bad? There it is, it was backwards, I couldn't read it. Is just a little bit over 17. This one is. Obviously, I'm overlaid because this is just under 17. So I know that 17 is going to be my, my constant number. So by cutting a block at 18, I'm going to be okay. But, you know, don't, don't feel like you have to just go with whatever number you get first. Go ahead and, and double check a few different spots and just make sure you've got the right, the right size. If you have scrap fabric, now when I first did um, on point quilts, I would just get like some old muslin or an old sheet and I would cut the piece out. Or, you know what, brown paper bags are perfect for this kind of a situation. I can't tell you how many times, especially doing those square in a square, I can never get them right. I don't know why. So I take the square that I want finished. I draw it on the paper, and then I draw my pattern, cut it out, add seam allowance, and there's my templates. For some reason, I just have a mind block with those. But whatever the case may be, find what works for you. If you're good using the calculations online and you want to use um, those sizes, absolutely. That's perfect. Again, I would always add a little bit because you don't know. Um, are they, because it's a decimal point. The size of the block is probably going to be to three or four decimal points. And if someone just takes the first number, like it's going to be 18.1 or, you know, 18.2, well, is it two point, you know, two five or should it be up to half an inch? And, and so rather than getting caught up in all that, I just do it this way. This, this is a very easy technique. It's very simple and it works. It works for me. There is one other way that I want to show you how to determine the size triangle you need. So I have my 11 and a half inch block that I cut and it's the quarter triangle so it's my finished block and I'm going to line this up at zero. And it should be right at about 11 and a half in both directions. Now what I want to show you is here's an easy way to figure out what size it is from here to here. Sure, there are equations, but we can also measure. I'm going to go to 12 inches just so I know I'm oversizing and not going to come up short. If I take my ruler and measure from 12 to 12, so I have a 12 inch square and I am going to 
lay my ruler diagonally and put it right on the 12 inch line there and there. And you know what that lines up at? 17 inches. So I know that I need to have a block that is at least 17 inches on the outer edge in order to fit along this open triangle area on the edge of the quilt. So again, like I say, there are a number of different ways. This is one of the ways I tested first before I did the point to point measure and I forgot to show you that. So I'm glad I remembered and we will go ahead now and cut our large triangles for the side setting and then I'll show you how we do the corners and we'll have a quilt before you know it. If you have a better way, absolutely put it in the comments. I would love to hear other folks how you all do your on points. I was never taught this per se. I just kind of came up with my own method and sometimes we don't figure in some perhaps easier ways to do it. So I would love to hear from you about that. But in the meantime, what I'm going to do is cut some background fabric. I'll get the squares going and then I'm going to show you how we put this together. My quilt is laid out so I can see exactly what it will look like. And I want to point out to you where the triangles are going to go, particularly the side setting triangles. Those will be the large 18 inch that we're going to use. So you see each side has four triangles. So I'm going to need four triangles along each edge. So if I cut four large squares at 18 inches, each square will give me four. So by doing four squares, I get a total of 16 triangles. And that's what I'm going to do next is cut the triangles to fill in each of these, these areas. Then the last thing I need to do is cut the corners. And see, these are a much smaller triangle and we'll take a look at that after, but I just wanted you to see visually what this quilt top is looking like. You'll notice that there are rows that go side to side. So these seams are all straight seams and the largest row, the longest, is going to have nine blocks and that's the same in each direction. So we have nine blocks here, then we have seven, then there's five, and then three, and then a single. And when I sew this, I'm going to start from one corner and I'm going to sew these rows together and include the triangle on each end. So once all these rows are pieced individually, I'll press them. What I'll probably do is pair them up. I'll, I'll put the first two rows together, then these two, then these two. And then that way I can press that center seam as I go. I find doing these long seams in a quilt after it's all pieced kind of tough. It's a lot to, to manage. So if I get half of them done ahead of time before I piece my quilt, that just makes it easier for me. So step one is to cut my triangles. Then I'm going to start piecing my rows. And then once those rows are done with the triangles attached on each side, I will add the corners and then that's the finish. So let's go ahead and get started. Let me show you how to cut those uh, squares into triangles and how they'll fit with into all this. When you're doing an on point quilt or anything with a diagonal pattern, doing stars, triangles, things like that, you need to keep in mind the direction of your fabric. Many quilting fabrics, the direction is, is not an important issue. These, however, though it's a very small print, you can see that these hearts do have a, a direction. They're top and bottom. Sometimes hearts, when you buy prints, you know, they'll go in every different direction. They sort of set them around different ways. But in this, they're very straight and linear and they're all facing in one direction. So what I'm going to do is I put all my blocks with the hearts going in the same direction. I'm going to make sure I use these four on the top of my quilt, each of these on the sides, and this on the bottom. So around the quilt, all the hearts are going in the same direction. 
it's not that critical, but I think it might make me a little crazy if some of the quilts were this way, or excuse me, some of the hearts were this way and then that way. So I just want to um, take a little time and make it work in a way that's good for me. So that's those four. Now, let me just show you real quick on this particular block. As we're sewing along, we're going to take one of these triangles that we just cut, and that is going to be placed right here next to the end of the row. So as we do our strip, our blocks to create the row, then what we have is this triangle, and it's going to join up here. Now, I always match up at the corner. Make sure this is straight, and I match it up here. I'm going to have extra up here, but remember, I cut this a little bigger just so I didn't run short. So I'm okay with a bit of extra. That's not a problem. I'd rather trim than not have enough. Now, the second thing we need to do is once our side triangles are all in place, we now have to, at the end of our row, in the corners, cut a triangle that's going to go like this. So what we need is a triangle about this size. And again, there are lots and lots of uh, charts and calculations out there to help you figure that out. But let me show you what I find to be the easy way. What we're going to do is cut a square in half once diagonally. So it's that diagonal line that's going to go across this block. The diagonal line is the bias. The outer square edges are going to be the straight of the grain. They're going to hold their shape. The bias is prone to stretching. So we want to make sure that that is sewn and not on the outer edge of the quilt. Now, again, multiple ways, but one of the ways that I do it is I will take my block and put it on a 45 degree, let's see, right here, on a 45 degree line because I need to have a diagonal that goes from this corner to this corner. Now you can see we're going to go all the way from here to here. So if I cut a triangle this size, it's going to fit. Now the easy way to know what that is, is I'm just going to count up. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and a half inches. It's actually eight and a quarter, but I'm going to go to eight and a half. And I do need to add extra for my seam allowance. Because remember, on the corners, we have to have that little extra bit for the dog ear, the, the point of your triangle to hang out. And that's generally about three quarters of an inch. I generally will add an inch. So the dimension is determined according to the finished size of your block. So like me, if you are measuring according to the unfinished size of your block, you have an extra half inch here anyways for that extra seam allowance. So what I do is I just measure this dimension. I count up here. It's at eight inches. I'm going to bump it up to nine and I'll be good. So that's what I'm going to do is cut some nine inch squares, which I happen to have right here. And these are going to be corners on the outer points of the quilt. And this is going to fit. And I want to show you how this works. There we go. See how when this square, which is nine, nine inches, I already have it pre-cut, is set in the center where these cross, cross section, they cross over each other. And I line each one on these diagonal lines. There we go. And I'm just going to cut here. Well, if I were going both ways, I would cut this direction. But for this, I only need to go one direction here. And because this is directional and I'm only cutting it one way, I'm going to get some kind of funny corners that may not match up with everything else. But I'm OK with that. I'm going to make that work because some of these go a little bit sideways. And I'm just going to let them match up to whatever is there and make it work. 
Okay, so now I have my corners. And so when I'm sewing this block, I'm going to take this corner right here and see we have plenty of room on each side for our seam allowance. And I'm going to sew that and then this is going to become the corner of my quilt. It's all wonderful, it works great, I love it. Don't let the math scare you. There, you don't have to do the math. There are ways you can just measure to make it work. And because I'm visual, I think that comes easy for me, so I want to show you just how to figure those things out. And a lot of times, if you just put the basic drawing on a piece of paper and draw the piece that you need, it's like, oh, okay, that works. And that's how I figure these things out. And I always like doing it myself. I don't have any problem looking at the charts and just see, oh, how different are my numbers than theirs? And they usually fall in line pretty darn close. I do tend to make mine just a little bit bigger, but like I said, I just prefer that fudge factor. <laughs> it's just, just an assurance to me that I'm not going to uh, end up with any shortages. So let me go ahead and start putting these pieces together and show you how we're gonna assemble this quilt. To begin assembling, I start in the corner, and that's with one single block. And then we're going to put a triangle on each side. Let me show you how that works. On this one, I have already attached the first triangle, and the second one is pinned in place. And I'll sew along here, and you see now how I have this angle coming in, and I need a corner. So this is where the little nine inch squares come in. When we cut those in half, that creates the corner. And so I'll line this up right here and fold it over with my seam allowance and everything lines up beautifully. And so we have our corner of the quilt and you'll see now this is going diagonally in relation to the outer edges. So that's how we make an on point quilt. Now to kind of jazz this up a little more. Let me show you the next step. So this is a, sing a row with a single block. The next row will have three. So we always add two to the outer edges. And I'll show you how that works right here. So here's the center block. I always want to line the center blocks up and then the others will go out to the edges. And I'm going to pull this up because I know it's hard to see all this. So here's my center block. And I'm going to sew this right here to that triangle and see how this is going to create my diagonal line here and do the same right here. And I get that diagonal line. So by doing this, I'm going to try and bring it in so you can see it. You put these together and then here's your diagonal, just like that. And that's how you box your quilt in. And doing it on point is just a matter of adding these triangles onto the side to make the block go just a little bit, 45 degrees, so that it looks like a diamond instead of just a square. And it's a lot of fun and it looks beautiful and it's a great way to finish any kind of a patchwork quilt. Most all blocks are able to do this and look really good in that pattern. So there's kind of some fun ideas that you can think about, but let me go ahead and put more of this together and I'll show you how it looks. Here's the first corner assembly. You can see I have a single block here with a side setting triangle on each side as well as a corner setting triangle. So with this single block and those three triangles, I create a pyramid, a larger triangle. And this is what creates the corner of my quilt. Then my second row will be these three blocks. So I line the centers up, one extra block on each side, and I add a side setting triangle on this end, and a side setting triangle on this end. And that gives me this row, the second row, and when they're sewn together, these triangles and corners all come together and notice how it's forming a straight line. I do the same thing with the next row. I have 
my side setting triangle I have five blocks again the center square is lined up the entire way and then I get my nice long straight edge here's a diagram of the quilt with all 41 blocks and you can see how it's laid out this is the corner that we just did this is the first block with a side setting triangle on each side and a corner and this made our large triangle that becomes the corner of the quilt this same corner is duplicated down over here so it's just going to be a second piece done the same way on opposite corners from here we're going to work in rows so we have a single block then three blocks five seven the nine block which is our center strip and then seven five three and one each row has a pair of side setting triangles one on each side and that's what gives us the straight edge of the quilt when we get to our center row though we use a corner on that strip on each end and then we reverse the strips in order to get to our other corner this gives you a overall picture of the assembly I am working on a pattern this is part of that pattern I'm just not ready to let it go yet there's there's still some uh, instructions and photos that I want to take in order to make sure this is very clear before I include anything in a pattern so this will give you an idea visually of how it goes together what my next steps are will be to combine these strips and I did show you on the design wall the corner with the three strip and the five strip so these pieces are already finished now I'm going to start assembling these rows so let's go ahead and take a look at that and here's the finished quilt top all pieced and ready to go I love how these blocks all work well together the colors are are wonderful there's a lot of pink the purple just creates a nice kind of a darker background almost and then we have these light low volume prints which are fantastic and play off this outer uh, what do I want to say on point border it all really works well together but I really like these dark strips in here they set the blocks apart and really add a nice design I like this a lot there's a lot of pink in there I'm glad I have the the greens and the the sort of coral colors but the low volume I think worked in this better than I really expected one thing I think I may do is I don't want to finish the quilt just like this I'm going to see if I have enough of these uh, these fabrics to make a narrow strip all the way around and then use what I have left of this background as a little bit of a border on the outside I think that'll finish it off nicely um, I don't usually do a lot of borders but for something like this I think it'll work out well so let me just show you the uh, other picture I have of this quilt you saw the quilt draped behind me in the intro and I just took a close-up picture because I thought it would be fun to look at and I just love how all these blocks work together and all these different prints oh, this is really a favorite of mine I can't wait to get this pattern finished I'm working on it it's quite the project this is a uh, lot of instruction that I want to make sure is clear and concise so once it's ready I'll let you know I hope you enjoyed this quilt as much as I did it turned out great and I'm really excited about it I appreciate you following along thank you so much for being here and I hope you have some great ideas now for a quilt of your own get your fat quarters your scraps your strips and see what you can come up with have a wonderful rest of your day